Ukraine's artillery has been wildly effective during the invasion of Russia, and Russia's general inability to conduct counter-battery fire to reduce that effectiveness is oftentimes met with remarks about Russia's prowess on the battlefield, or general lack thereof. It's actually a story of red tape, antiquated tactics, and a little old thing called Skynet, or Starlink. It's one of the two. Now let's talk a little bit about fire control. Ukraine uses a program called GIS ART for artillery, and it's been likened to systems used by Uber and Lyft for assigning drivers to pickups, only in this instance it's assigning fire missions. The US has similar but more antiquated systems like the Tactical Fire Direction System, otherwise known as TACFIRE, and the Advanced Field Artillery Tactical Data System, AFA-TDS. Where Ukraine actually has an advantage over even US artillery capabilities, though, is red tape. During the global war on terror, the US's typical call to fire time, or the time between identification of a mission and sending a round down range, is somewhere near an hour. Now that might seem like a lot, and that's because it is. This is largely because of the introduction of JAG officers into the artillery decision making process. Now this is an overgeneralization of time, and I'm sure there are faster times out there, but the point is that the introduction of varying approval levels and checks slows down the process of putting rounds on target. I personally have dealt with JAG even on things like leaflet drops, so imagine the red tape on a lethal weapon system. There's a good reason for this though. The additional time reduces the chances of friendly fire, as well as a general reduction in risk associated with civilian collateral damage. Ukraine has diverted a lot of that decision making down to even lower levels than the US, and does so with agility using GIS art for artillery. GIS ART for short allows Ukraine to rapidly assign targets to batteries, guns, air, or even soft teams on the ground whom have been equipped with the terminal. This system is able to ingest intelligence from ground and air sources and then assigns those targets across an array of in-range capabilities. There are, of course, risks associated with being so rapid, risks like increasing the likelihood of collateral damage and friendly fire, especially in an instance where the weapon systems being used are basically all from the same warehouse. That risk is really only mitigated by the quality of intelligence provided by the sensors that are feeding it. Now the second factor. This is going to be Russian use of antiquated counter-battery tactics, but even more important and more relevant is Ukraine's Wolverine-like displacement of their artillery. Something that you'll note in the vast majority of Ukrainian artillery combat footage is the use of single guns. When you watch their impacts on Russian positions, however, you'll see large barrages indicative of multiple guns, multiple calibers, and multiple directions. Rather than what has historically been the norm for artillery since the dawn of the cannon, i.e. lines of artillery firing in a single direction, generally speaking, Ukraine chooses to displace their artillery across a wide range and uses GIS art to assign targets to individual guns and capabilities against specific targets. From a counter-battery perspective, this presents pretty heavy challenges to Russia. Russia's counter-battery radar and techniques look for large grouping of guns and typically fire in battery formation. This means that Russia typically prefers to duke it out in lines, not unlike most other countries, and isn't prepared to deal with each individual gun being used. They knock out one, then have to run a new fire mission on another. Russia's counter-battery radar is really only able to see a series of individual guns and making counter-fire largely ineffective. To make things worse for Russia, and in case you figured they could just transition from gun to gun, Ukraine really only fires a couple rounds from each system and immediately displaces, or immediately moves. Now the last thing of note is specific to Ukraine's interconnection of systems across the battle space, which comes at the hands of none other than Twitter daddy Elon Musk and Starlink. Early in the invasion, Russian state-sponsored cyber actors targeted somewhere around 40,000 SATCOM terminals in both Ukraine and other countries, and was able to take them offline. That's largely because these are former Soviet-era systems. Initially, that introduced major challenges with Ukraine's ability to conduct effective and secure C2 across the battlefield. This is where Starlink comes to play. Starlink's introduction in Ukraine as a replacement for their aging systems that were knocked out by Russia's cyber capabilities has proven to be even more effective than the earlier Soviet-era ground-based systems they were using prior. Add that on to the fact that Russia's targeting of SpaceX and Starlink has thus far been ineffective at best, and Ukraine is now communicating and assigning missions to combat teams across the country with next to nothing Russia can do about it. That's it. There is why Ukraine is quite literally winning the war with artillery. It's the king of battle for a reason, guys. Hit the like, hit the sub, hit the bell, and stay informed. Hey, outlaw, outlaw, outlaw. Dad, push me harder.